Hello! What you're about to see is a uh, clip of a discussion uh, between me and Adam Argyle, who is a CSS wizard extraordinaire. He's a CSS uh, advocate at Google's. It's a discussion about linters and TypeScript and uh, their their value and like both me and Adam are a little bit of um, skeptics when it comes to automated checking. We both use and love it, but we are also like both of the same feeling that it's like ah, oh, it's not clear cut if they're actually giving value or not. If at any point you're in a video where you feel like oh yeah I, yeah, I agree or don't agree, like then post your experiences with TypeScript and linters down below. Before we get on to the clip, I would like to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN. Why am I saying Nord? Like it's it's NordVPN. Jag kan prata svenska för jag är från Sverige. Uh, no, in Swedish it's pronounced Nord, not Nord. That's weird. Like it's it's Thor, not Thor. God damn it! <laughs> All right, so it's warm and it's very very important to use a VPN. For many many years I've always used a VPN when I was traveling because if uh, when I'm traveling I connect to a lot of uh, open networks and the thing with open networks that surprisingly many people don't know is that if you connect to an open network and go on a normal HTTP connection or any unencrypted HTTPS is sort of fine uh, any 13 year old with half a brain can download a piece of software and read all the communication that is going on over the network. It's really like ugh, scary and a VPN prevents that. A VPN is also very handy if you need to uh, test your uh, country uh, country detection logic in your uh, in a website or if you just need to access a, a series on a streaming service that isn't available in your country. And honestly, like using VPN just gives me a nice peace of mind because uh, governments today are super, super grabby with uh, with data. Like uh, in the EU, like so much data is stored. And like, yeah, in a perfect world, uh, governments are hmm, cuddly and nice, but... What the? What is that? I'm speaking of government, uh, government surveillance, and there is an actual black helicopter flying, <laughs> flying outside the window. Um, yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, NordVPN. Uh, this really, really good discount for fun, fun function viewers. You can get it by using the information in the episode description below. Click, click. Now on to my ES Lint co rant with Adam Orga. It's like I like linters too, but sometimes I'm like, just a human should review that code. Yeah. Don't trust these things so much. Like, plus, who wants like someone behind their shoulder going eh, red, squiggly? You know, eh, red. Dude, I'm just trying to like, can you get off my back? I want to stub something out here. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be official every time. I don't have to write perfect production code when I'm just trying to figure some shit out. Like, get off my back. For sure. I found that like linters really, really damage my productivity if I use use them as a browser plugin. Because like what like for instance like unused variables, yeah, that's great to have like a check for that on like pull request level or build system level so that it doesn't get into master. But like having like like as it's like turning on the spell check or I find that when I'm when I'm writing text, you know, like uh, a script or something, like an actual script for a video, I always use like some simple text editor to, uh, to do it so that I yeah. can't get into like formatting and paragraphs and, and fancy stuff like that because it distracts a ton. It's very, very yep. nice to have like be very problem, uh, problem focused and only I almost would like like a set of linter rules that are like that it only lints for things that are actual total breakage and then like right, it's not you know, nits yeah i guess i could probably set up the linter to have like errors and warnings and like being very meticulous with that and then have the browse like the editor plugin only show the the critical errors might be a good idea to do that actually. 
Yeah, I have, I've I've set up a few linters as a front end architect and at a consultancy and for building teams or whatever. Um, I I have this I have this thing, and I'm I'm pretty sure I share it with you or I got it from you or we aligned on this or whatever. But it, it's looking at everything for ROI, like how much am I putting in? Yeah. And a linter is one of those things. Like I. I Multiple times I had to go fix the linter because I would I'd customize it for our team and then someone would find some little thingy and then I have to go fix it. The first it, it took me at first you know an hour or two to go research every linter option to figure out what was best for our team yeah. to reflect with our team about what we wanted. Let's just say I put in four hours in the linter. How long does it take for our team to get four hours back yeah. in savings from that linter? And you have to think about that the linter is also creating more time for you that you're not actually getting things done. So it's sort of taking time. While it might be saving time, it's taking time. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we leaned more into PR um, code uh, reviews. So we did code climate and a few other things that on PR we'd get a grade and we'd get linters ran then. Yeah. We found that drastically enhanced our flow because the linters that were constantly nudging us, me having to constantly manage the linter because it was poking everyone all day. Um, yeah, you got to be really careful about some of these tools. They can take time from you more than they ever give back. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm especially skeptical about tools that create buckets for you where you can put red little balls. What I mean by that is like, <laughs> it creates like this little check box that you can check and then you get a reward. It creates a red little squiggly line under something and now you can fix it. And now there's no longer a red squiggly line. And now your brain releases dopamine. And it feels like you did work. You might yeah. have done work because it like, might have been like an actual error. But it might also just have been like, oh, adhere to this. Uh, spacing constraints before params or something um, <coughs> and those tools have like a component of them that they they become popular because they feel good uh, like they're, they definitely feel good yeah there's yeah. a there's a feel good component to them so if a tool is fun to use I'm always very skeptical like a little bit extra skeptical of its value because it, it might be there because people like think it's fun to use and that is why yeah. like I um, why I'm deeply skeptical of TypeScript because whenever I introduce like a, a, a TypeScript to my dependency chain like I just go haywire and I like, can spend all my time on, on TypeScript it's so TypeScript distracting. is a needy bitch dude it's crazy um, like that is <laughs> <laughs> it truly is like, and the thing is, I think about TypeScript too. Is it's like it's it's so rewarding to TypeScript. You can TypeScript all day and actually not get anything done in your app because all yeah. you did was enhance your typings. Yes, and you can get stuck in this like very feel good, like I'm getting some work done, but really all you did was spend eight hours enhancing your typings. And I saw someone arguing here. Uh, which is usually a good point about linters and, and unit testing and, and TypeScript, which is, yeah, but it will save you bugs, bugs you didn't even know, like that you'd have to refresh your browser to get the bug. And I'm like, okay, that might be one out of 50 things that ever bugs me about, and the other 49 are wasting my time. So you, it's just, to me, the ROI isn't there. The one bug it saved me from a day, maybe, is not worth the 49 other times I had to tell it to shut up. Yeah. Because um, I'm... This stuff's hard though because um, there's there's potential value. There's absolutely potential value. The hard thing is is actualized value. Like, did you see Brendan Ike? I think it was Brendan Ike. He came out and he was like, "Well, we just did a huge TypeScript project over the past year and a half or two, and I got to say, I'm not using it ever again." No. Huh. Oh, really? And he goes, and he goes because the ROI wasn't there. He yeah. goes, "Look, I can go count all the hours we spent TypeScripting. I can go count all the hours we spent doing this." And I cannot count nearly as many hours of savings that we got. And he's like, this is just the reality of my of this scenario. Um, he's like, I'm not hating on TypeScript. I'm just saying that the things we believe we're going to get, we don't always get. It's yeah. just not a guarantee. There's so many things that we think are guarantees in code. Uh, like control. We think we have control. Like TypeScript has this illusion of control. At the end of the day, you're giving it to a bunch of chaos monkeys that are going to like, you know, this is users I'm talking about. And they're going to 
They're going to use your app in a way you didn't predict. Yeah. And now since you went in and you put extra screws on everything that you built and you went and labeled it and said, this is a, sure. this uses the screw is three, four, three quarters of an inch or whatever. And yeah, then like, that feels really good, but it feels really good, but I think it's overconfident. I think it, anyway, in my opinion, we generally get into web development and we're overconfident we build V1 and we think V1 is dope shit. And it turns out V1, no one gives a crap about, and you should have like prototyped more and iterated more. Uh, anyway, so I'm a big fan of iteration over perfection, which is not a very popular mentality. People like to perfect before they iterate. Um, yeah, but it, like, feel, it, it, it's yeah. it's more appealing, like to to perfect. Like you, I, it's absolutely dreadful to iterate. Really, uh, it's um, like when you if you just work on your chamber all day, you can just work in like a mental model. Of something like you, and the mental model is perfect because it doesn't have to confront reality. Like I, I love designing products when, like, oh, think about ah oh, this and this and this and how it works together. But whenever you actually have to launch it, you have like users will not do the things you expect them to, and there's like these weird considerations where like there's some law that prohibits you from doing like this arbitrary thing or there's this competitor that has a stranglehold on the market or like users are asking for things that they don't actually need but you re have to implement it anyway because all the users are asking for it like reality yeah. sucks man of course like it's way more fun to perfect it dude have you seen the south park where <coughs> reality shows up they personify reality what no yeah it's amazing he shows up to this party it's like this gala that they're having to I can't remember exactly, but it's a bunch <laughs> of rich people showing up at a rich event to save money. And basically, reality shows up and he starts knocking over glasses of wine. He's like, "Yeah, doesn't reality suck?" And basically, <laughs> he, he ends up like he ends up grabbing the mic and gives this phenomenal speech. And it's just this like gut wrenchingly honest, realistic of like, because yeah. So it's, and at one point, someone goes, "Oh shit, who let reality in?" You know, like. Um, in this mentality that we kind of go through a lot of our day it, uh, in this sort of mental projected perfection of like what we think we're attending, yes. but then reality can show up and just completely ruin it because re reality is reality. It doesn't give a shit about anything. It's just going to crap on whatever it needs to crap on or it's going to compliment what it needs to compliment. And yeah, I think... Have you have you heard about <laughs> yeah. uh, limnic eruption? Ooh, no. No, that's... this is my favorite thing ever. Uh, it, it's uh, it's the most horrible natural disaster that exists. Um, so you know, like how a lake can get like these pockets of carbon dioxide build up in like in the bottom, and sometimes they just <coughs> bubble up to the surface because of you know some um, uh, small earthquakes. So that just shakes these pockets loose. And normally the pockets are like very small and doesn't doesn't matter, but they can grow enormous over years and years and years. And if it's a big lake and a big pocket, and all of this shakes loose at the same time, it means that there's so much carbon dioxide getting pumped up to the like blooping up to the surface that it pushes away all the oxygen in. Uh, a like a like like a square kilometer area, uh, like and pushes the oxygen below breathable levels. So everything that needs oxygen <laughs> to live within that area just dies, like that. Whoa! So you're just walking around and like suddenly there's no oxygen and you drop dead. That's not freaky. Not, not at all. <laughs> uh, and like, it's a very, it's not well known because it's a very rare, uh, it's a very rare uh, kind of natural disaster. It has, it has only killed humans uh, like uh, like three times in history, but it wiped out a village uh, like in a hundred years ago, or something like that. Uh, it's it's bizarre, um, but either way, I. I love the fact that it exists because it's such a good reminder that the universe doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> it just goes on. Like it just bloop and then humans die. And like the universe is not evil or anything. It's just like, no, 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 I'm just bur burping carbon dioxide here. Like, 
Oh yeah. Oh, uh, so um, Sarah Bando says 1986 in Lake Neos. Oh, nice. Uh, Lake Neos disaster. She linked it in the uh, in the chat. Well done. Oh, I like this question too. That I think TypeScript has a place based on the requirements. I totally agree. So, um, real quick. Uh, I don't mean to crap on TypeScript. I think it definitely has a place. I think typed languages still have a place. Um, I just <coughs> came from typed languages, and I was so happy to get the out of them um, that I don't ever want to go back. And every time I go back, I have this like Stockholm syndrome or whatever. Where yeah. hey, that's rude. It's not. It's not Stockholm's dope. Why do we have Stockholm syndrome anyway? <laughs> um, I just have these like feelings where. Um, it things just take a lot longer and for no good reason. So in, in the yeah. front end, I think it's a terrible choice. I think it's great for a library, and I think it's great for the back end, something very data-driven, something very contractual, that uh, you do have much more finite sort of I.O., but the front end is not a place for you to try to grab that much control. I think you have to be flexible on the front end or you will pay um, some prices. Anyway, yeah. so TypeScript is cool. Yeah, yeah, I think it's cool too. Like uh, type type languages are amazing. We have some amazing type system innovation going on. It seems like people really yeah. like Rust and Go. Also, seems to have a very sane type system. And, and TypeScript is certainly uh, oh, doing Kotlin a lot. Too, yeah. But I think it's also. I just find it important to stress that not doing types is also like a valid development approach. And I'm with you totally of that. I'm so happy I'm not way down with types anymore. I think, yeah. think that a large degree due to my own personality, because I'm very easily distracted by these things. I, I think so too. Um, yeah. I think that a person that is more, a little bit more disciplined uh, and more, more, more goal oriented can can deal with TypeScript a lot better than I can. Um, but like the dangers of it is too alluring for me, really. Yeah, I, I'm i the get shit done mentality. And anyone that tries to tell me that they can get shit done quick in TypeScript is lying. Don't, don't <laughs> lie to me like that. That's not true. It's not true. And it's not fair. To, I mean, you might be able to do one out of 10 things faster, but the other nine, I'm going to smoke you. It's not even going to be a fair fight. Yeah. Um, and and to be honest, like yeah. in many cases, you don't want to do things too fast. I mean, a, a big thing with, for instance, like code review is that you are slowing down the process. Like you're not yeah. like just pushing things into production like wildly. You are adding an inertia to your development process where, hey, let's look at this and like do see if it's okay. No replacement for human to human code reviews and and code suggestions like that. And that's another thing I don't like about linters and TypeScript and all these other processes is that they we try to augment the human and turn it into a robot yeah. so that and have you heard this argument where it's like, hey, no one gets mad at a linter, but they'll get mad at a manager who walks over their shoulder and tells them to change a variable. Oh, I get mad at a linter. <laughs> Uh, I know I get mad at a linter too, but a lot of other people don't. They're like, "Oh, red squiggly." Yeah, well, yeah, let me sure. Just fix that. Thank you, homie. Yeah, you're cool. Um, yeah, but anyway, if a manager I, did it, yeah, you would be really pissed off. Uh, you'd be really that's pissed off, like, dude, get off my get off my back. And so, um, I I disagree with that because I think the human side of this can't be removed. It's um, if you do, I think you 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 have too much trust. You overly trust a system, and you will introduce bugs in some other way. Um, humans, any any code review I've ever gone into, as soon as you even ask someone to review your code, you're like, oh crap, I already see bugs in my code. <laughs> uh, True, um, for sure. Like anyways. just if a human looks at looks at your code, like that makes a difference. It's kind of like the quantum physics of code, quantum bugs. It's like the once you've observed it and then it knows it's been. A, what's the observe? There's a anyway, whatever. I'm screwing it up. I don't know. Once <laughs> once physics is observed, it 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 does weird shit. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, NordVPN. You get a really good discount by following the instructions in the episode description. If you liked this episode and you want to see more about what this channel is about before subscribing, you can check out this playlist or just subscribe right away. Do it. On Mondays, you can also see the show being recorded live at twitch.tv slash funfunfunction. Until then, I am MPJ, stay curious.